Hey, I'm Kendara Blake, author of the Three Dark Crown series, and this season's Epic Reads author in residence, back with more book recommendations. It's another costume week here because we are talking about historicals. Yay! So, um, I'd better get into my historical costume. One moment. Okay, I'm back. This is a bonnet. Yes. I'm ready to get in Pa's buckboard and go buy a yard of calico. Whatever that is. If anybody knows, please leave the answer in the comments. Um, historical books. I really, really love them. Sometimes reading is such an escape for me, and what better way to escape than to read about a time long before I was ever born. So I've selected five of my favorite historical novels from all sorts of different periods in history, and I hope you will enjoy them. The first book recommendation is Ray Carson's Walk on Earth, A Stranger, which I absolutely adored. I had the pleasure of going on tour with, with Ray a couple of years ago, and she is just a delight, so witty, and uh, very, very dedicated to her historical research, which completely shows in Walk on Earth, A Stranger. This is the first book in the Gold Seer trilogy. It is about a girl Leah Westfall, who can sense gold. Um, and during the California Gold Rush, this was a very, very useful skill to have. So you know how some people, they could like divine water, like they're little dowsing rods, you know? They're just out there like finding water, which is also a very valuable resource. She can do that with gold. So she gets like a tingle when there's a really good gold nugget nearby. Unfortunately, she is not exactly where all the gold is, when this book begins, she is far, far to the east on her family's homestead, but one thing leads to another and she finds herself en route to California via a wagon train. Now, if you are like me, you really enjoyed playing the Oregon Trail as a kid, or if you haven't, go find a copy anyway. It's like this really ridiculous kind of dumb totally, totally entertaining game where you honestly have to shoot things that you never hit and uh, usually die of like dysentery. So Walk on Earth a Stranger, big, big scenes from wagon trains, um, a lot of uh, exciting travel imagery and it's almost like historical and survival and fairy tale all mixed into one because of her very unique ability to seek out this gold. So, Walk on Earth a Stranger, Ray Carson. The second book I'm going to recommend, which this was in a time before Bonnets, so I feel a little silly, but I don't care. This is The Other Boleyn Girl by Philippa Gregory. I am a big Philippa Gregory fan, and I'm a big fan of The Court of Henry VIII. If that was a fandom, I think it is. I'm definitely a member of the Henry VIII court fandom and all of his six wives. Uh, this is the story of his, well, sort of the story of his second wife, Anne Boleyn, and kind of the story of how she finagles her way into power, but told through the gaze of her sister, Mary Boleyn, the older sister who, according to some historical historians, uh, was sleeping with the king first. Which, okay, that happens. That happened a lot back in the day, actually. So she is the other Boleyn girl of the title. This book is full of history. It is dishy. Um, it is completely intriguing. You wouldn't think that something about the monarchy could be this, you know, just soapy and kind of just deliciously trashy and completely, completely addicting. You will probably read this one in like two sittings and then maybe even devour the rest of the series. She writes, Philippa Gregory writes a lot within this. So she also wrote a novel called The Constant Princess, which is about Henry's first wife. She's probably covered all of the other wives. Uh, there's a series on stars going on right now about her sagas of the Queens of the Wars of the Roses. So that starts with Elizabeth Woodville, who was married to Edward I, and that story is told in The White Queen, continues on with the daughter in The White Princess, who marries Henry's dad, Henry VII, and then starting soon, or by the time this video, it'll be over, uh, The Spanish Princess, which is once again about Catherine of Aragon, 
who was Henry's first wife and factors largely into this book. So the other Boleyn girl, highly recommend. Recommendation number three is Farmer Boy by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Just to be honest, I've never actually read this, but I had to include it in the recommendation video or my friend wouldn't let me borrow this bonnet. So, Farmer Boy, she's a huge fan of Laura Ingalls Wilder and we do spend some time talking about this book. I mean, she's a big, big Little House on the Prairie fan, hence the ownership of the bonnet. This book is about Almanzo Wilder's childhood. So Almanzo Wilder is Laura Ingalls Wilder's husband growing up in, I believe it is like rural pioneer Minnesota. And what I didn't realize is that Almanzo Wilder was like the catch of the county. His family was very, very wealthy. I'm talking they ate pie almost every night. That was a catch. Like you, you really wanted the boy who could afford to eat pie every night. Because meanwhile, Laura was like 18 before she even knew what an orange tasted like. So anyway, farmer boy, you might enjoy it. It's a classic. Okay, I'm ditching the bonnet. It's a little warm. It's a little warm in Pa's buckboard. Okay, Spectacle by Jody Lynn. I don't know how to pronounce her last name because I have not had the pleasure of meeting her, so I'm gonna say Zdruck. I probably messed it up. Uh, Spectacle is kind of set in Paris around the time of, say, a, a Jack the Ripper-esque. This book is very Jack the Ripper-esque. It's not, it's not actually Jack the Ripper, but because, you know, Jack the Ripper was in London, this is in Paris. But I, I really like Jack the Ripper and that whole story, and this book is about a young woman who is a journalist, and she covers the hot stories from the public morgue, which if you were back in the day alive in Paris, sometimes you would stroll through the morgue on a Sunday afternoon just to see what fresh bodies were on display for the public because you're Parisian and fancy and morbid and you needed something to talk about over tea. So when really grisly murder victims start showing up in the morgue, she has to get to the bottom of it. And the closer that she gets, the more dangerous it is for her. A lot of lovely historical details in this one and a lot of just really nice historical morgue stuff, which I always enjoy. Spectacle. I hope you like it. And the final historical recommendation that I will give to you is a large one. It's the first of an adult trilogy called the Lost Queen by Sidney Pike. The Lost Queen is... It's about Merlin's sister, who I did not even know existed. I did not know that Merlin had a sister. Within the Arthurian legend, all you ever really hear about is, is you know, Arthur and Merlin and Arthur's sister and then Guinevere and Lancelot and all the famous ones that we already know. So it was refreshing to see, you know, an alternative history to both Merlin and his sister. Um, she did a lot of research in the area and I mean this is probably, I don't know if this is disputed, nobody really knows because it was so long ago and the records are so poorly kept, a lot of it is filled in the blanks and you have to infer it, but it is an excellent, excellent early historical saga. It is about Merlin's sister and as she comes of age and becomes, you know, she has to make choices like women did in those times. Her dad was the king and she has to marry to make political alliances so she can't marry the noble knight who she really loves and she has to come to terms with that and all the while you know she's coming into power and her brother is coming into power and it's just it's very good it's completely engrossing and I like Arthurian legend and I like things from that time period you know out on the the magical woods and and when magic felt very very close to the people's daily lives when you had you know wise women and, and wise elders and a lot of herbal lore and a lot of herbal healing and sacred spaces and it was the time when Christianity was just moving into Britannia so you had a lot of the old religion trying to find a place within the new religion and clashing in that way and it's all very dramatic and 
very enjoyable. So The Lost Queen, Signe Pike, this is the first book. It is a trilogy. I do not know when the next books are coming out. Sometimes with adult trilogies and adult series like that, it's not, it's not like we are in young adult. You know, we, we try to keep it once a year, you know, pretty, pretty on the schedule. So I'm not exactly sure when the next one will be here, but I do hope you enjoy it in the meantime. All right, so those are all of my historical recommendations and I'm not sure which video that I'm going to be doing up next, but I do know that I have at least one more costume planned. So, you know, there's a treat for me, mostly, not for you. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed these recommendations and be sure to subscribe to Epic Reads for more great bookish content. I'm also online, social media, if you want to um, tell me how good I looked in my bonnet, I would really appreciate that. So just, you know, at me, at Kendara Blake on Twitter. Um, and I'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Kendara Blake, author of the Three Dark Crown series. Thank you so much for watching. For more videos, click here, and to subscribe to Epic Reads, click here.